What do fruit flies do? People don't associate humans with flies. And there is a link through genetics. The idea of trying to join fruit fly in your mind with schizophrenia is really quite a difficult uh, idea to comprehend. And so you ask the question, You are slightly re removed from reality when you have hallucination. You can also have auditory hallucinations where you hear things. Uh, hear things that are not there. The most classic one that people talk about is uh, voices in the head. And it's difficult to then try and process as an individual what is real and what is not reality. Um, and when the two become blurred, that's when you really need help, you need the intervention. So when I was 10 years old, uh, a family member was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Because I knew this person and was quite close to this person, uh, it shaped me from a young age. The family experience as well made me ask more questions about why certain events were happening, why certain people were ill and no one could help them. When I was younger uh, I always asked why was this, why was that? Um, so I think there was a curiosity that was inbuilt in me from a very early age and as a scientist if you ask the question why then that's a research project for you. So that's why I got into science uh, and then looked at science in a broad broad area first of all, um, human biology. And then from human biology took the, the basics and went to genetics, which underpins all of the disciplines in biology. Over the course of the last 15 years, researchers across the world have been working together to try and identify genes that may be more associated in people with schizophrenia. Recently we've found that 108 genes are definitely involved in schizophrenia and we now need to understand the function. And one simple, easy way to do that is to switch off each gene one by one in a fruit fly that shares genes with humans and see what happens. So here's the group of flies in the laboratory, we're keeping those fruit flies in the vial and uh, study their behavior and associated with structure change in the brain because we are interested in the schizophrenia problems that in human we know is associated with brain abnormalities in certain areas. So we use behavioral assays to look at how the fruit fly reacts to certain environmental conditions. And one is the uh, fly climbing test where you put fruit flies at the bottom and you see how quickly they migrate to the top. And you basically compare the, the flies with the gene of interest against flies that are normal. What you would expect is that the flies that are uh, fine or normal would migrate quickly and the flies that have a gene knocked down would deal, in a, deal with stress in a different way. Of course, one test on its own relating to the human condition doesn't make a lot of sense, so you need many tests in the fruit fly in order to then create a picture that you can relate back to human behaviour. Are you making flies that are mad? Of course, the answer is no. But we share about 70 to 80% of genes between fruit fly and humans. They're simple uh, to deal with. They live for about two weeks and we can have several generations of them within a month. So that means we can look at how genes pass from generation to generation. In terms of more complex diseases such as schizophrenia or cancer, they are all complex genetic disorders in that there are many, many genes involved, but also environmental factors as well. And so that's the big challenge to see whether or not we can use the fruit fly effectively. 
to answer some of the fundamental biological questions underpinning the, the disease process of schizophrenia. Most people in the same discipline as me, whether they're psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, nurses or geneticists, we all have a story to tell. Um, we all know someone in our family, whether they're close or uh, slightly less related, that has psychiatric illness. It puts a lot of strain both on the individual but also on the family members. Um, it's daily, it's constant, it's heartbreaking. And without support and without the correct treatment and correct help, it's soul-destroying. 